Now we are going to move to the skeletal system. It's all about the bones. So four cool facts about the skeletal system. 20% of your body weight is bone. Do the math. Your body weight times 0 0.20 equals the weight of your bones. Second, there are 30 bones in your skull. Wow. Number three, you have 206 bones in your body, and more than half of these are in your hands and feet. Okay, the fourth cool fact about your skeletal system is that the largest bone in your body is your femur, the upper bone in your leg, and the smallest bone is called the stapes. It's in your middle ear, and it is involved in hearing and in balance. Three millimeters long. Three millimeters. That is... Very, very tiny, about the size of a small little sugar ant. There are five functions of the skeletal system. First, it provides shape and support to all your soft tissues. Second, it enables you to move. It works with your muscles. Third, it protects your internal organs. Fourth, it produces blood cells, yes. And fifth, it will store materials for future use. And you'll notice we say internal balance alert. What does internal balance mean? Somebody tell us what internal balance means. So of the five functions, first is shape and support. Here's some details. The skeletal system provides shape and support for the body depending on the organ it needs to protect. For example, the skull is thick and round to cover the round brain, right? The shape of the skull matches the shape of the organ it's designed to protect. The second function of the skeletal system is that it enables you to move. Uh, the muscles work with your bones to make you move, and that is a pretty important function for our skeletal system, to keep us moving through the world. We're not like trees. We don't stand still. The skeletal system allows us to uh, have structure when we move around. The third function of the skeletal system is to protect your internal organs. That's because your organs can get squished, right? They're actually quite soft. Examples of this, the heart is protected by your breastbone. Your lungs are protected by the rib cage. Your spinal cord is protected by your spine. The fourth function of the skeletal system is pretty cool, pretty strange. This is where blood cells are made, is in the bones. Blood cells, specifically the white and red blood cells, because you'll learn that there are other types of blood cells too. The white and red blood cells are made in the marrow of the long bo bones of the arms and legs. This is an example of homeostasis. And it's needed because when you bleed, new blood cells need to be made. And this is where it happens, is in the marrow of the arms and the legs, the long bones. The fifth function of the skeletal system is that it acts as a storage place for materials for future use. And uh, specifically, it stores calcium and phosphorus for release into the body when it's running low, like after you break a bone. Um, when you break a bone, these materials are needed immediately to replace the bone as it, as it heals. So these minerals are stored in tightly packed solid mass called the compact bone. 
And again, this is an example of homeostasis where the body is helping itself stay in balance. Now, let's talk about some other functions and structures of the skeletal system. If we're going to talk about bones, we have to talk about joints. Joints occur where two bones meet or come together. They make the skeleton flexible because without them, movement would be impossible. Think about it. If bones were all just solid, we'd have no ability to move. So joints are really important for flexibility. So there are two basic types of joints. First of all, we've got fixed joints, like are in your skull. And then, second, you've got movable joints. And there are a lot more types of movable joints. There are four types of movable joints that we're going to look at in the next slide. So four types of movable joints. First of all, we have the ball and socket which allows rotating movement like you have in your shoulder and you have in your hip. The second type we have is called a hinge joint, and that's a joint that bends and straightens in one direction, like you have with your knee and your elbow and your fingers. The third kind is the gliding joint, and that permits a wide range of motion, mostly sideways movements, and that's going to be your wrist and your ankle. And then the last kind is called a pivot, and that allows you to twist, have a limited twisting motion like what you have on your neck and on your forearm. So four types of movable joints. After talking about the four types of movable joints, we have to talk about how those joints are held together. Ligaments are the thing. Ligaments are strong connective tissue that holds together the bones in movable joints. They're kind of like the tape that holds bones together. Uh, however, if you look at the picture, uh, unlike the little cartoon character where the tape is wrapped all around him, in a joint, the ligaments are actually, uh, can be woven in like you see on that, uh, I think it's a knee joint, where the ligaments are kind of inside the joint. They can also be on the outside, like you see the ligament on the outside of the elbow that's holding the, the two bones together. It can be on the inside or outside. The question always arises, what about people who are double jointed? Well, not really it's impossible for humans to be double jointed. That's not what's going on. What is happening is that some people are born with looser ligaments, which gives them more mobility in their joints than people who have a normal range of mobility. Uh, doctors refer to this as hypermobility or joint laxity. And uh, for, in, in, in reality, it's a problem, especially for uh, like professional dancers. You can see the diagram of the two lower legs there. Uh, the one on the left shows a leg that hyperextends backwards. And if you're a professional dancer, that's going to be an issue for you. Your, your legs aren't going to be as strong. They're not going to be able to withstand the work that you put them through uh, without going through some potentially more pain and suffering than someone who has a normal range of motion. Also, um, if your elbow hyperextends beyond 180 degrees, that's usually because you've got a slightly smaller than normal uh, section of the ulna, which is called the olecranon, and it's a kind of a stop bone that stops your arm from extending past 180 degrees. If we're going to talk about the skeletal system, we have to talk about cartilage because cartilage is a strong structure like bone, but it's more flexible. So in certain spots on our body where we need flexibility but some durability, cartilage fits the bill. On the next slide, we'll look at where on the human body cartilage is found. 
Now let's talk about where you can find cartilage. You can find cartilage in your nose. If you look at the picture, it's the kind of grayish color material. That's cartilage. You can find it in your ears. The picture shown here shows a view from the outside and then the amount of material that's inside is in kind of a blue color. That's the cartilage. You can also find cartilage in your rib cage. The picture shown shows you that the sternum is actually a bone that's in the center, but the cartilage connects the ribs to the sternum. You can also find it in your knee. Uh, the picture shown here shows how the cartilage is kind of the meeting point between the tibia and the femur, and uh, it allows that padding between you and the pavement when you're walking. Uh, it doesn't make your bones slam together. And then similarly, there are discs in between the vertebrae in your spinal column. The, those, uh, those discs allow your bones to, uh, allows you to move around sideways, to bend over, and uh, those bones don't rub together. All right, so now you're going to use your notes, talk with your table group, Find the answer to these five questions. What are the five functions of the skeletal system? How many bones are in your body? Where are more than half your bones located in your body? And what's the tissue that holds bones together called? Additionally, on the next slide, you've also got on your notes, name the five functions of the skeletal system. Write them out there on that tree map as well.